session 10 is uh, cost allocation and activity-based pricing. So if you have a firm which has uh, different products and it also has <coughs> some, uh, let's say, service uh, departments, so which are not exactly producing a product, but they provide services to the production units, then the question arises, how are the costs of these service departments to be allocated to the production units? And the direct method of allocation, what it does is that it says that, let's say that the allocation is going to be according to this base number, uh, this uh, base criteria, and that could be uh, the amount of floor space used by a production unit, it could be um, the uh, a number of uh, employees each of the production unit has, so it could be labor. So deci uh, depending on the base criteria, uh, the costs are distributed among the different products in proportion to the use of the criteria and here let's say the allocation criteria is XYZ. Right. Uh, now we come to the chapter on cost allocation and activity based pricing. Again this video is uh, standalone. So that is you know as I go through these questions I shall discuss the formula being used and so you should be able to just watch this video and learn. Of course uh, you know you should also read your textbook but these videos are standalone. Um, I explain everything that I'm doing here. Um, so here we have a farm which has a call center and it provides services for a sales department and the warranties department. So there are uh, these two. Um, so in this cost allocation basically this is going to come up again and again. You know you have uh, one firm which is uh, doing more than one thing and how do you allocate the cost to the different operations. So the call center has a certain cost and it provides services to both sales and warranties. Now we have to figure out how much of the call center cost to allocate to sales and how much to warranties. So we have to figure out the cost assignment. And these are um, some data that you've been given. Fixed costs are assigned at 35 and 65% respectively. So fixed costs go 35% to sales and 65% to warranties. Variable costs are assigned as $7 per call. Okay. Now sales makes 3,000 calls and warranties makes um, 9,000 calls. The cost for the call center are salaries, which is a fixed cost, is 90,000. Depreciation fixed cost is 10,000. And now we uh, want to know how much cost is going to be assigned to sales and how much to warranties. So first we look at what is the total fixed cost. Well the total fixed cost is uh, the sum of salaries and depreciation. So that's 90 plus 10. So total fixed equals 100k. And of this, 35% would be assigned to sales. So 35k will go to sales and 65 will be assigned to warranties. So that is the fixed cost part of it. We also have to uh, take into account the variable costs and the variable cost because uh, sales makes 3000 calls and each call is priced at seven dollars, so it's going to be three thousand into seven, or that's going to be twenty-one k variable cost for sales. 
and 9,000 calls by warranties multiplied by $7 is 63,000 by warranties. So total cost assigned to sales is going to be the variable cost assigned to sales which is 21k plus the fixed cost assigned to sales which is 35k. So total cost assigned would be 56,000 plus the variable cost assignment of 63,000. So you add these two and you get 128,000 for warranties. This plus this give you 128k. Now you note that uh, you know you uh, add up the fixed costs 128k and 56k and you add up the cost of the call center uh, that adds up to 180,000 whereas uh, these two add up to 184,000 so uh, they are not exactly they don't exactly match but this is how you assign the costs. Here we have a firm which has uh, two service divisions D1 and D2 and two production divisions P1 and P2. Now these production divisions use the service divisions so the service divisions uh, costs have to be assigned to these production divisions because finally you want to know um, how each production division is doing so you want to see the total cost um, for that division uh, and you want to compare it to the revenues it produces uh, to get some idea of how much profit each production division is uh, generating. You can't just ignore the cost of the service divisions because the production divisions are using the service divisions uh, to manufacture whatever good or provide whatever service that the firm does. So uh, the way costs are going to assi be assigned here are by the direct method. Okay. Now what is the direct method? Well in the direct method you have something called an allocation base or allocation basis. All the allocation basis is that it says that okay um, look at some particular feature of the production division and uh, assign costs in proportion to the feature that feature uh, and I'll just explain with this example uh, what happens so here we have these two divisions D1 and D2 and they We have these divisions D1 and D2, uh, each with a budget of, uh, uh, and the D1 has a budget of 5 million and D2 has a budget of 2 million. And then we have the square footage being used by uh, P1 to be 40K and by P2 to be 30K. So P1 uses 40,000 square feet of uh, maybe factory floor or office space, whatever. And uh, P2 uses 30,000 uh, of space. And if this is the allocation base, so if square footage is the allocation base, then you're going to use this, the proportions here, to assign these costs. So what is the total cost here? Well, the total cost here is 7 million. And if you split that in this proportion between P1 and P2, so 7 million and here you have a total of 70,000 square feet. So P1 will get 7 million into 40,000 by 70,000 or that will be 4 million. So in the direct method using square footage as the allocation basis, P1 
one will have four million assigned cost. Similarly, P2 will have the total uh, cost of uh, for the service divisions of seven million multiplied by uh, the proportion of office space that P2 uses. So that is going to be 30 by 70 and that is equal to 3 million. Now uh, just um, even though this is all the same row but really this is one cell D1 has a cost of 5 million and D2 has a cost of 2 million and this is a standalone table which is telling you that for square footage uh, P1 has 40,000 square foot used and P2 has 30,000 square foot used. So this is a standalone table and then you have a standalone table which gives you the amount of labor which they use and let's say the amount of labor uh, P1 is using is 84 and P2 is using is 56. So if you use labor instead of the allocation base, basis, then we again divide this cost of a total of 7 million in proportion to these numbers. So what is the total labor being used? Total labor being used is um, 84 plus 56, which is 140. So uh, if you want to allocate using this as the basis, then you would take the total service department cost of 7 million and you would multiply that by 84 by 140 and that would give you 4.2 million. And similarly, you would have 7 into 56 by 140, and that would be 2.8 million. So this is the distribution of costs using labor as the allocation base. This is the distribution of costs using square footage as the allocation base. So uh, depending on which allocation basis you use, you will have a different distribution of costs. Here we have a problem where we have to find the uh, cost per setup and the firm produces toasters and it wants to switch to an activity based approach to assign prices, uh, to assign costs. Now the production line setups are a major activity and the firm will perform 500 setups during the year and the total cost of that will be 5,000. The manufacture of toasters will require 20 setups and there will be 2,000 toasters manufactured. So the firm produces different uh, appliances and toasters is one of them. So even though it will produce, uh, it will have a total of 500 setups, only 20 of them will be for toasters. And the question asks, what is the uh, cost for uh, each toaster, the setup cost? Now you look at the cost of each setup, the cost of each setup is the total cost of setups is 5,000 and there are 500 setups per front. So the cost of each setup is 5,000 by 500 that is equal to 10. So each setup costs $10 and toasters require 20 setups. So the cost, the total cost for toaster setups is 20 into 10 equal to 2000. Now, uh, no, sorry, equal to 200. So 
if the total setup cost for toasters is 200 and there are 2000 produced, then the setup cost for each toaster is going to be 200 divided by number of toasters, which is 2000. So for each, it will be 200 divided by 2000, which is equal to 10 cents. Here we have a firm which is planning to increase production by 500 units. And it, this increased production is going to increase its revenues by 100,000. Now costs for this increased production are direct labor. So that's like labor directly employed in this production is going to be 50,000. Direct materials is going to be 30,000 and overheads are 40,000. So this is what the accountants tell you, like this is what the accounting is done and this is the assigned costs to this increased production. However, there is one, you know, then you think that, okay, this is the revenue and these are the costs. I'm just going to simply subtract uh, costs from revenues and I'm going to get profit. Uh, no, there is one thing which is, uh, you have to pay attention to here, and that is only 5,000 of the overheads are variable. Rest are fixed costs. Now, th what that means essentially is that even if the firm does not increase production, these fixed costs would still be there. So, of this 40,000 which has been assigned as overhead to this increased production, 35,000 is anyway going to be spent by the firm on fixed costs. So if that is true, then we just need to take the increased costs when we want to decide what the profit from this activity, from this increased production is going to be. Uh, so uh, we just want to look at incremental cash flows. We don't want to, um, you know, look at things which would happen anyway. Uh, the this overhead is can be divided into like uh, thirty-five thousand, which anyway the firm will incur, which is like a sunk cost, and plus five thousand if the increased revenues were uh, to be done, and therefore instead of forty thousand, we'll just take five thousand as the cost. Then the profit becomes revenues of 100,000 minus uh, direct labor of 50,000. And this direct labor, if uh, the increased production is not done, then none of it will be employed. And so this will be a zero cost otherwise. So you'll take the entire 50,000 um, direct labor. Similarly, you'll take the entire 30,000 direct materials but only 5,000 of the overheads, which is the true variable part of the overheads. Um, variable in the sense that uh, they will only um, uh, be, um, uh, there's only 5,000 will be the extra amount spent by the farm if it was to increase its production. And that will give you profit from this activity equals 15,000. Note that if you had taken this entire cost of uh, 40,000 um, instead of just 5,000 that you took, your um, profits would turn out to be negative 20,000 and you would not have done the increased uh, production, which would have been a mistake because uh, this increased production is really going to generate an increased profit of 15,000 rather than a loss of 20,000. Here we again have a similar question where a certain overhead is assigned to an order 
However, the overhead is composed of variable cost and fixed cost and we have to take that into account in assigning the correct overhead for uh, calculating uh, the uh, opportunity cost or the profit uh, for this uh, activity. So in this activity we look, uh, we note that uh, there is direct labor for uh, these shoes which are to be manufactured and there's direct materials. So these are indeed costs which should be assigned completely to this manufacture of shoes because if these shoes were not manufactured these costs would not be there at all. However, when we come to the overhead, the overhead is taken as 6 and if you look at it, the way this overhead is found, it is by uh, the total uh, overhead of 10 million is divided by direct labor of 25 million and so uh, the allocation by using labor as the allocation basis 10 million of uh, cost is divided by 25 to give 0.4 as a multiplier and then that is like how much labor does this consume well this consumes 15 so the overhead cost is assigned by taking the labor of 15 as the allocation basis and then multiplying it by uh, this um, ratio of total overhead divided by amount total amount of labor so that's 0 0.4 to get 6 and this 6 is been given to us as the overhead however only if you look at it of this 10 million total overhead only 3 million is variable cost and only 7 million is fixed cost uh, and 7 million is fixed cost only 3 million is variable cost so how does this matter well it matters because if we don't do this then it's not that we are going to save the entire uh, 6 we shall only save the variable part of it and the variable part of it is only 30 percent of the total so it's only uh, of the overhead, only 30% is the uh, variable part, the fixed cost is going to be there anyway. So when we assign 6 as cost to this activity, then that is uh, assigning too much because like 30% of 6 is 1.8, so the firm is really going to spend an extra 1.8 and not this entire 6 because the 4.2 the firm was going to spend anyway from the from the 6 therefore the correct um, amount of uh, overhead to assign to this activity is only 1.8 and not 6 which will give us the total cost to be 15 plus 10 plus 1.8 equal to 26.8 so this is the number you should compare with the revenues which this will produce um, to decide whether you want to do this or not. 
rather than comparing the entire 15 plus 6 plus, uh, 15 plus 10 plus 6 equal to 31. So 31 is not the true cost of this activity, it's rather 26.8. Here we have an example of cost allocation where uh, we are producing ovens. So the firm produces ovens and other appliances. Now there are two kinds of activities uh, which uh, feed into these other productions. So uh, these activities are uh, materials orders and equipment setup. So these are also called cost pools. So uh, cost pools because all the different things which the firm does, they all use these material orders and equipment set up. Uh, so the cost of this is the pooled cost of all those different uh, products with the firm manufactures. So the cost of material setup and uh, equipment setup are the pooled cost and they total 80k for material setup and 50k for equipment setup. And then there is this uh, thing like cost driver. So what is a cost driver? Well, the cost driver is this 80,000 which you have, what is uh, the driving, uh, you know, what is the driver behind this 80,000? And it's a number of purchase orders. So the more the number of purchase orders, the more larger would be this. Similarly, for equipment setup, the driver is uh, the number of setups and so this is what uh, determines how much is spent on equipment setup it is the number of setups which are done now the annual activity for materials order so we are again so we have this uh, cost pool which is material orders and the annual activity of material orders is 500. So 500 material orders are done for all products out of which ovens are 80. Similarly, there are a hundred equipment setups done out of which 20 are for ovens. So the question is, how do we distribute this overhead and per unit cost for ovens? So these are the overheads, the uh, cost which is going to be assigned from materials orders and equipment setup. So um, we want to know how much to assign to ovens and uh, how, total how much to assign and also per unit. Well, look at the material orders. Okay, we start with material orders. And what is the cost of each material order? Well, the total cost is, uh, is uh, 80,000 and there are 500 of them done. So the cost per material order will be 80,000 divided by 500. 80K divided by 500 which will equal 160. Similarly, the cost for each equipment setup will be the total money being spent on equipment setup, which is 50,000, divided by the number of equipment, equipment setups, which is 100. So equipment setup uh, per unit cost will be 50,000 divided by 100, which is equal to 500. Now, for uh, assigning this overhead to ovens, what we are going to do is we are going to see how many equipment uh, how many materials orders are done for ovens and that's 80. So we are going to multiply 80 into uh, the price for each one, the cost for each one which is 160 plus 
the number of equipment setups done for ovens, which is 20, into the cost of each, which is 500, and this will total 22.8K. So this is the total overhead, 22.8. Now, what about the per unit cost? Well, the per unit cost, the overhead portion of the per unit cost is going to be twenty two k divided by the number of ovens manufactured, which is one k. So that's going to be twenty two point eight. However, we also have to in the per unit cost, we have to add the direct costs of ten for materials and eight for labor. So that will be 22.8 plus 10 plus 8, or that is going to be 40.8 dollars. So this is the per unit cost. Here we have an example of a farm which produces widgets and some of them are defective and are rejected by quality control. Now, the firm is thinking of undertaking a process improvement initiative. So what this process improvement initiative is going to do is that it is going to reduce the amount of defective widgets and uh, we want to know uh, if the only variable cost is labor, what is the benefit this is going to produce, this process improvement initiative? When you look at these numbers, it makes 20,000 widgets out of which 5,000 are rejected. So the number which are good equals 15,000, right? So that's the number which it wants to produce. But in having to produce 15,000 good widgets, it's having to produce a total of 20,000 because 25% are rejected. Now, this initiative is going to reduce the number of defects by 50%. So that would mean that instead of 25% being defective, the percentage defective will drop to half of 25%. Currently it's 5,000 by 20,000, that's 25%. So half of that will be 12.5%. So the percentage defective will drop to 12 and a half thousand. And if it wants 15,000 good widgets, and the rate of uh, rejection is 12.5 percent, then what, then what is the relationship that we will have? Well, the relationship that we will have is this 15,000 will equal the total produce, so let, let us call that number x, into 1 minus 12.5% which are going to be rejected or 12.5% uh, is 0 0.125. So 15,000 will equal the total number produced x into 1 minus 0 0.125 or x will equal 15,000 divided by 0 0.875. So, what will x be equal to? Well, you divide 15,000 by 0 0.875, you get 17.14 thousand. So the number of widgets will have to be produced after the process improvement is done is 17,140 as compared to 20,000 earlier. 
So new cost will be the new number of widgets being produced, which is uh, 17,000. 140 into the cost per widget and now labor is 1000 units of labor are employed at $25 an hour so the amount of labor that was needed to the amount of labor dollars that were needed to produce 20,000 widgets were 25 into 1,000 or that is 25,000. So each widget needs $1.25 to be produced. That's because uh, the total for producing 25, uh, 20,000 widgets was $25,000 or each one required $1.25. So the new cost is going to be 17.14K into 1.25, or that is 21.43K. So that is the total cost which you're going to have. Uh, the uh, new cost and that you're going to compare to what you are spending earlier. Earlier you were spending 1,000 labor hours into $25 per hour. So before you are spending 25K, now you are spending 21.43K. So your savings are 3.57K. So this process improvement is going to lead to a savings of 3.57 thousand or 3,570. Here we have a question where a firm makes uh, two kinds of models, ka and ta, and what it turns out is that Ta is actually more uh, profitable to make than Ka. However, the firm keeps making Ka because you know it could be a loss leader. Uh, what's a loss leader? A loss leader is something which a firm does, which is um, you know it's a loss making activity. But the firm believes that uh, for some other reason it's going to it's good for the firm to do it. So it like produces a profit maybe somewhere else. So uh, we want to know what the opportunity cost or OC for making car rather than tires. Okay, so we basically want to know if we switched from making car to tar, how much more profit we would have and that would be the opportunity cost because by making car we are giving up that money. Now, we have 200 units of car being made and 400 units of tar. And uh, 10,000 machine hours are available, of which 6,000 are used for making ka and 4,000 are used for making ta. Now, in an earlier question, we had a situation where there was a demand constraint, and you could not sell more than a certain amount of uh, uh, model. But here, there is no demand constraint on uh, ta. You can actually use all the machine hours to produce uh, ta and uh, it would, uh, you know, the firm can sell all the tars that it makes. Okay, now besides machine time, variable cost for car per unit, PU is per unit, is 3,000. For ta per unit is 2.5,000. Ka sells for 6,000 and Ta sells for 4.5 thousand per unit. So we have to calculate the opportunity cost. So let us look at uh, 
how much each, how much machine time each car needs. Now each car, there are uh, 200 units produced and they consume 6,000 uh, machine hours. So each will be 6,000 divided by 200 will be 30 hours. So each car needs 30 hours to make. Each tub will need 4,000 divided by 400 or each one will need uh, 10 hours. So if the farm, so okay, now what is the profit produced by uh, the cars? Well, uh, the, each one sells for 6K and uh, each one has a variable cost of, so profit, car will be uh, the profit for one of them which is uh, 6k minus the variable cost which is 3k into the number of units which is 200 so uh, that's going to be um, uh, 6 minus uh, 3 into 200 is going to be 600,000. So that's the profit which car currently makes. Now if you were to stop making cars and you were to make cars instead, how much more cars could you make? Well, you see, um, if you took this 6,000 machine hours which are being used by uh, cars currently and you instead use them to make cars, then you would have the number, additional number, um, So how many more uh, tasks could you pr uh, produce by using this 6,000 to produce tasks? Well, it'll be 6,000 divided by 10 hours for each task. So you'd be making 600. And each one that you make generates a profit of Four point five K, which is the selling price, minus the variable cost, which is uh, two point five, the variable cost per unit for ta is given as uh, two point five K. So six hundred into 4.5 minus 2.5 is 2K, so this is equal to 1,200K or 1.2 million. So this is the profit you would make by switching over to ta instead of ka. However, you'd be losing this 600,000 profit then, which you're currently getting from cars. So uh, the increase in profit will be the new profit which will be uh, 1200k minus the old profit which is 600k so it will be 1200k minus 600k and that will equal 600k so this is the amount of 
profit you could do by switching over the machine from producing cars to producing tasks and by not doing so the firm is losing 600k which is the opportunity cost of not doing that so you know whatever reason they are producing car instead of tar is costing them 600,000.